I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA Staff Professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're going to look at hole number three as part of our continuing series on how to think your way and play your way around a golf course. Hopefully you can adjust this to your home golf course and where you're going to play in the future. Let's go. Again, 161 from the gold tees, 96 from the forward tees and the combination tees in, in the middle. It's a pretty straightforward hole. Most people get sucked into looking and focusing on this bit here. Obviously blue on a map is going to indicate water and that puts negative connotations in our head. People start thinking, don't go in the water. Don't is negative. Water is the last thing you've put in your mind. <clears throat> Try and get away from that narrative. The green itself is a big green. All I've got to do there is aim for the middle of the green. As long as I'm putting that thought process into my mind, it's going to give me the opportunity of making a more confident, more positive swing. Now I'm standing back here on the tee, standing next to the tee markers. I've already lasered this. It's 164 to the flag. This is showing 145 to the front, 165 to the back, and 154 to the middle. So that flag position, although it's right on the left-hand side, is more towards the back edge of the green. I'm not going to play towards that flag. It's right tucked in on the left-hand side. That's a sucker position. I'll play towards the middle of the, of the bunker behind the green and try and play a little draw into that flag. If I hit it straight, I'm still safe. If I hit a draw, I've got a chance for a birdie. But don't get aggressive on uh, something like this. Again, we're gonna be happy taking the par three and walking off to the next hole. It's a 164 for me. It's kind of stuck in between a nine and an eight iron. I'm gonna, rather than go aggressive on the nine, I can back off the edge, the front edge of the markers, I can play up the two club lengths back. Play just inside the two club lengths. And then I'll rip down the club a little bit, take a little bit off the length of the shaft. So it's more of a nine iron length for the shaft. So I'm lining myself up and getting my visuals. generally going to be playing from. I have problems getting over the water and 
that straight away puts you into a negative mind frame. It's like, I can't, and the water is the last thing you put in your mind. So you're more likely to put a negative swing and your golf ball is going to inevitably more than likely go into the thing that you just stuck in your brain, which is the water. Um, I've just taken a photograph using the phone, literally from standing here, looking that way towards the green. And then there's a secondary photo from exactly the same spot. And the graphics on it are awful because it was just hand drawn onto it. But it shows you the different perspectives where you've got the, the physical reality of the water in front of you compared to the mental picture of just imagining that that was nothing but fairway and the viewpoint changes drastically because if that was just grass all the way up there we wouldn't have the panic of trying to get over the water we're more likely to put a positive swing on it and get the center face contact and get the golf ball to go the distance that we want it to so don't ever give yourself that don't i can't what if i'm scared of mentality be positive i am going to get the ball on the green i'm not looking at the bunkers i'm not looking at the water it's a positive mental picture that i'm giving myself i've got a big broad expanse of green to aim towards i am going to get the ball on the green Okay, if you're unfortunate enough to hit the ball into the water from the tee, your options are gonna be either drop, keeping the point of entry in line with you and the flag, which is gonna put you down there in the jungle. You're gonna re-tee it, and then you're still gonna have to carry all the water again with your next shot, or here we've got our drop zone. We've got the reed area, we've got a little bit of water to go over, but. It's a much shorter shot. It's much more friendly. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we've got the drop zone here. We've only got a little bit of water to carry over. It's a much friendlier shot to play. Looking at the Bushnells here now, 38 yards to the front, 53 yards to the middle, and then 70 yards to the back edge. I'm still not going to attack that flag. It's tucked in that left-hand corner. The green is sloping that way as well. So I'm going to take that to my advantage and aim a little bit to the right towards the middle of the green. Uh, I'm gonna find a decent area to drop from. Some people have clearly been taking advantage of using the drop zone. Now aim towards the fat middle part of the green. And then let it work its way around to the flag. There's a safe option. That's with the lob wedge. Try that one more time. So a little bit of a less lofted club. A little better feel. A little more aggressive than I would have liked. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, also hit the like button if you're liking what we're doing. And if you like or if you don't like what we're doing, Leave us comments on how we can get better because we're still learning as well. We'll see you soon.